Y'all, my nerves bad. I just went through way too many emotions watching this. I was mad. I was shook. I was excited. I was disappointed, yet fulfilled at the same damn time while watching Bandersnatch. What is Sharana from Pay or Wait? And today I'm going to be reviewing Black Mirror Bandersnatch, okay? So this just came on Netflix last night, middle of the night, however you want to call it. And so we saw a trailer that Netflix dropped prior of a day ago, basically explaining what this movie, well, I didn't even know it was a movie then, y'all. I thought it was just one of the episodes because I thought season five was coming. Was I the only one like, hey, where where is season five? I don't see my season five. All I see is this movie right now and I don't get it. So after I got over my, my disappointment, I went ahead and played it and I will have to say I have a mis mixed reaction to this I have fun but I was also mad sad happy upset unfulfilled all at the same time as I said in my intro so this film is actually directed by David Slade who's responsible for directing Twilight Eclipse he directed some episodes of Breaking Bad of American Gods of Hannibal but most notably he directed um, an episode in season four of Black Mirror Metalhead which was not one of my favorite episodes y'all I was like oh when is the damn episode gonna be over okay and I think a lot of other people didn't too much care for it but I would have to say that David said y'all I'm sorry but I'm gonna go ahead and redeem myself with Bandersnatch or did he let's get into it so um, essentially I'm gonna talk about what I liked about the film what I didn't like about the film and I also want to get into some spoiler talk just in regards to two of the what we kind of know are five endings that I experienced because yes I was watching this for three and a half hours okay um, and so I want to talk about two of the endings that I really enjoy but I don't want to spoil it for you guys so I'll wait till towards the end of the movie so you can like skip it go watch it and then come back to it so one of the things that I really enjoyed about this movie was Fionn Whitehead. So essentially Fionn Whitehead, who we know most notably from 2017's Dunkirk as Tommy, he plays this young programmer called Stefan who is basically creating this game called Bandersnatch. And so essentially this this game that he's created is based off a book um, that he has found. It's an adventure book where basically you make decisions for the character to push the character along his journey okay and so that's kind of where we are with this movie and so one of the things that I did like and dislike at the same time but I'll explain that later was I love that this was an interactive movie for the movie watchers okay so essentially you are presented with choices that you have to choose for Stefan's character um, throughout the course of this film and you kind of see how those choices or decisions play out and so I was getting anxiety y'all I was like I can't do this first and foremost because I lost my damn remote like five times while watching this movie so for those of you who are like me and you begin all comfy and cozy in the bed and you lose your remote if you do not find your remote quick enough they will make a decision for you and basically whatever's highlighted at that time that is what they're going to to choose and that gave me so much anxiety I was like where is my remote why can't I find it did you make the right choice for me did you waste my time Netflix what are you doing with Stefan's life okay because his life is in my hands and I just can't take it right now and so you go from making small choices like what type of cereal should Stefan eat what type of music should Stefan listen to all the way to like should he destroy this should he kill this person kill that person I said y'all this too much I didn't sign up for all of this it's four o'clock in the morning I one trying to do all of this today but I think that's what I loved about this movie is that it keeps the audience engaged you cannot be doing side stuff or like just doing other stuff you have to pay attention you have to be engaged what gets you invested into Stefan's character and the decisions that you decide to make for Stefan and so I think that's part of bringing yourself into this game reality where you kind of toy with do my choices really matter you know, do you have free will? Does it matter like what I do? Will I still end up at the same outcome? Or also too, is something as little as choosing what cereal I'm gonna eat, is that gonna lead me down a wrong path? And I think that's one of the things that I find most intriguing about this film. Also too, I love the Easter eggs that they had. If you're a Black Mirror fan, I've watched all the, epi all the seasons, all the episodes, and so I'm looking like, I see what y'all did there. Oh, I see what y'all did there too. I was here for all of this. So they make references to some of the previous um, episodes from season three, season four, season one, uh, most notably the season one um, Easter egg. I was just like, ooh, I like how y'all did that. I like what you did there. I like how all of these 
other episodes kind of tie into the same universe, even though this movie takes place in the 80s. And so um, I really enjoy that aspect of what Bandersnatch does to change the viewing experience. And so as much as I love that, there are some issues that I had um, with this movie. As for someone like me who's lazy, I don't necessarily like being tasked with having to go find my remote, having to make these decisions because it kind of takes the fun out of it when you make this wrong decision, they basically tell your ass to go back. So they just like, you to make the wrong damn decision, go back and try again. And so I think that that kind of takes the fun out of it almost because I'm just like, well, damn, I didn't make the wrong decision. Now I have to choose this. So, but it doesn't, it doesn't give you that same payoff because that wasn't the choice that you initially made. And so um, while I love the aspect of kind of making these different choices, I don't like that basically when you make the wrong choice, they send you back. And I felt like it kind of took the fun out of it. Also too, as far as the ending. So right now, um, we are being told that there are five different endings and I think I hit four out of the five. So somebody already spoiled fifth one for me, but I was looking for it so that it ain't they fall. Um, I had two that I liked the most, but overall I felt kind of unfulfilled by how the different endings happen. And so it's one of those movies where it's just like, is it necessarily about the ending? Because the first ending that I got, I was just like, hmm, I didn't like how this played out y'all. I wasn't here for this. And one of the things is Black Mirror, there's always kind of this story that's happening, but there's a bigger picture. There's a bigger question that you're left with after finishing the episode. And so after I got into the second viewing, that's when I realized that it's not necessarily about what happens to Stefan. It's more so thinking about are the choices that we make, do, a, do it lead us down different roads as we got five different endings? Or does it kind of lead us to the same outcomes? They just might play out differently. And I think that's really brought to um, as clear as day in my second viewing, where he's actually watching a documentary based on the author who actually wrote Bandersnatch. And she kind of, this lady is talking about how um, no matter what this person would have done, it always would have led him to commit this act. And so then it's kind of just like, well, it does really matter what choices I make or it doesn't matter what choices Stefan made because we really don't have free will or is our free will that our choices since they're different they lead us down these different outcomes or these different timelines and how that happens and so I have fun watching this Will I want to experience this again? Hell no. Y'all, it took me three and a half hours to watch what was supposed to be a 90 minute movie. I cannot do that for all of my viewing movie experiences. I do not have the time nor the patience or can I pay attention to that long. I cannot do that, you guys. I just cannot, okay? And I'm lazy. I just want to be cozy in bed, watch my movie and go on about my day. I don't want to have to start clicking stuff, doing all this extraness. And then with all the different stories happening like in different outcomes, I start getting confused for a little bit. I have to take a break, play my game for for a little bit and then come back to it. And so um, while I love Bandersnatch, I thought that it gives so many different people so many different takes on it because of the different outcomes, um, the interactiveness. I thought this was a really cool idea, but it is not something that I want to see become a fad. So all you directors out there, all you little streaming services, just don't, don't do this no more. Yeah, I did it, okay? You already did it for Puss in Boots, you did it for the, the Minecraft, and now you did it for Black Mirror. I don't wanna see this no more. Just let it be few far in between. Maybe I could do one a year and I'd be okay with that. But I do not want this to become a thing, okay? So, those are pretty much my thoughts without giving too much away from a spoiler standpoint. So, oh, if you have not watched Black Mirror Bender Snatch, go ahead, turn this off, and then come back to it. Because I'm going to talk about two of the endings that I like the most. Um, and so, I don't want to spoil it for you guys, okay? So, I'm going to give you them five, four, three two, one. Okay, so let's talk about these two endings. So one of the two endings that I enjoyed the most as I could, because they're all depressing endings. Um, one of the endings that I enjoyed the most is kind of like you see throughout the course of this movie that Stefan's father kind of is always locking his door. And I said, boy, what you doing? What is behind this door? And so we know that Stefan's mom dies because he couldn't find his toy rabbit. And she was trying to deal with that the whole time, which made her late to get on the train. And the train she got on ended up crashing. She ended up dying. So we see that Stefan had of finds he gets into the room that his dad always locks and he sees this um this safe and then he types in the code toy okay for his toy rabbit he finds the rabbit and he turns to a little boy and then he gets on the train with his mom because he found the rabbit on time and then they die together and I was like that's cute but that's really depressing y'all because they both still died like I just don't know how I felt about that but my favorite um ending was kind of this conspiracy okay and so we see that his uh one of the Colin um, is basically um, one of the other the star programmers at this company that 
Stefan starts working for and so essentially he talks about these this process and control of these packs and so instead of him entering toy you can enter in pack and then we find out that his father is not really his father his mom didn't really die he's been a part of this controlled study to see how people react they drugged him all type of crazy stuff and so essentially he ends up finding out what happened he killed the dude supposed to be his daddy and it's this big conspiracy but they didn't really dive into like what the conspiracy was how big is this how this is kind of tie into white bear because we kind of see that that was one of the easter eggs that was in the film and so that's why i still felt let down but this is still my favorite ending because i love anything with a big conspiracy and a big twist but i just wanted them to see i wanted them to really go into it a little bit more and so those are pretty much my two favorite endings there were other endings where he gets into this funny ending where he basically starts getting into this fight his therapist start got these little i was just like what is going on y'all i was like what is what is happening right now then there's a funny netflix one when you tell them like hey netflix is who is watching you and then there's one where they kind of um show what happens to him then it goes into the future where we see a new programmer she kind of starts going down the same rabbit hole as he does and so um yeah, those are pretty much, but the main two, first two that I talk about, those were my favorite. Make sure you guys comment, like, what was your favorite ending? Please put, like, a spoiler alert, because we don't want to spoil too much for everyone. But I really would like to have a lot of discussion on this. What endings did you get? What endings did you like the most? What didn't you like the most? I really want to have a fun discussion with you guys. But those are my thoughts on Black Mirror Bandersnatch. As always, my name is Sharana from Payer Waits. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and make sure you hit that notification bell. And I will see you soon.